The United States has provided $53.1 million in humanitarian assistance uh, with $50.1 million for emergency flood relief since August 12th, along with $3 million in resilience programming uh, to bolster disaster resilience. Uh, as, part of, as part of that assistance, last week we saw the United States Central Command in support of USAID begin airlifting humanitarian supplies to the people of Pakistan. Uh, and this uh, airlift, which will continue through this week, uh, includes essential life support services, including food preparation and shelter materials, um, which is coming in, in, in 20 separate shipments. Um, just as the COVID-19 pandemic has had a disproportionate impact on women's participation in the workforce, as we just heard, the catastrophic flooding is also a reminder that women and girls are the most are among the most vulnerable during a humanitarian crisis like this. And as we continue to support relief efforts with local partners and Pakistani authorities, we'll be looking closely at how to address the unique impacts of the crisis on women and girls. I want to acknowledge that US PwC corporate members, including S&P Global, PepsiCo, Coca-Cola and the resource group are also pledging support uh, directly for the victims of flooding. Uh, before I turn the floor over to Elizabeth Horst to speak about the Council's broader goals with the Future of Women and Work Initiative, let me underscore the importance the United States places on empowering women in the economy and supporting gender equality in Pakistan. 